Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I hate to start your morning off like this again, but I have another radioactive water release to report, this time at Prairie Island Nuclear Generating Facility in Minnesota. And I was scrolling through the NRC reports yesterday and noticed that there had been a release of 27 gallons from the condensate system, and I wasn't even going to do a video about this because there's just so much other nuclear news going on that seems more significant than this uh, this particular event but there's a list of the items and concentrations that were contained in this release and when I went to just check out a few mainstream sources from Minneapolis what I found was that two days before this 27 gallon spill uh, XL officials had notified the NRC that there had been a water leak conservatively conservatively calculated to be approximately 4,000 gallons and that had occurred between November 22nd and November the 29th and it was not reported until February the 1st. It is not on the NRC's list. Only the smaller releases. Now if we look at a map of where this generating station is located you can see downstream of here there are many uh, nature preserves, hunting grounds, state parks, looks like there would be a lot of good fishing in this area under different circumstances and if you saw my hazmat video from yesterday in regards to the Vermont Yankee plant then you know that radioactive contamination regardless of the source whether it be from peak testing, from Chernobyl, from Fukushima, or from any of these local plants, can contribute to amphibian deformities and radioactive fish. Here's the plant, and here is the city of Minneapolis. And considering that the metropolitan area of Minneapolis uh, has about 3 million residents, I would assume that a lot of these parks and uh, fishing areas are, are frequent, frequented by uh, the people that live in this area. I also came across this video from a NRC commission hearing that was public in September of 2010, and this is actually in regards to the San Onofre plant. But don't kid yourself, um, the prevailing attitude of this industry is so deceitful. If it's happening at San Onofre, and I know that it's happening for a fact at other plants because of family friends that work at them, and from uh, numerous people that have emailed me about things going on at the places that they work, these people are not allowed to speak out and they get retaliated against for doing so. So I'm going to play this. Uh, I apologize if the sound is of poor quality. There's a lot of uh, coughing and so forth going on in the background, but I'll put a link to this video below if you want to hear it again. Okay, uh, I realize we only have three minutes, so I'm going to go very fast. The uh, safety conscious work environment will be defined as sweet. Um, we heard some opening remarks that saying that was, no one was saying that they wouldn't raise a safety concern. Well, if people are afraid to raise safety concerns, you can't use the absence of someone saying, that they won't raise a safety concern. It's a double negative there. People aren't raising safety concerns for saying that I won't raise one because they're afraid to do that. Um, group interviews. We initially had some group interviews that were conducted by the NRC. I conveyed the information to the region board that group interviews are not totally accurate because in that interview panel, those the people present in that session, uh, John might be friends with KJ, so therefore I'm afraid to tell what I want to say for fear that it will get back to management. So those are not very effective. Oh, we don't have any truth in our meetings at San Diego, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce myself. I'm James Chambers. I'm a licensed nuclear reactor operator in San Diego, and currently working in the Nuclear Regulatory Affairs uh, Department in the licensing. Um, we have no truth at our meetings at the plant. And after I leave the meeting and I've, I've voiced my concerns, there are people that are patting me on the back and they're saying, thanks for telling the truth in there. I'm sorry I couldn't back you up. And that is the truth. And I've already conveyed that to management. Uh, there's a significant 
problem with people being able to tell the truth at the plant. Uh, we heard that everyone knows the definition of SWE, or safety conscious work environment. That's only because they need to know the definition to defend themselves. Everybody wants to use that definition to scrub San Onofre free of the problems that are causing the safety conscious work environment. People want to get rid of the people that are causing the retaliation against the workers for raising concerns. Um, we have brand new people that are raising concerns. Six month, nine month employees, not just the 20, 25 year employees, but brand new people that feel they're being retaliated against. Um, we heard that the company's uh, concerned and serious about resolving the SWE issues. I filed an allegation based upon SWE, and the company chose to use a representative, their previous uh, station manager, Al Hochebar, uh, to represent the company. And I raised a concern during the, the process. And is the right person going to be representing the company? Is there going to be a, the end result? Is it going to be positive? And it turns out that Al Hochebar, he's gone. So what happened to the concerns that I raised during my mediation? And I, I asked the question, if we have someone who's labeled as a contingent worker or a contractor, why do they be representing songs or Southern California Edison and then only leave a few weeks later after the mediation? I don't think it was the correct person to represent. Um, you came up with a plan. Song says always had a plan. But well, we've never really initiated or completed those plans. San Diego is an info four. We were at info three twice in a row. We we're at info policy note 14 plant. We're at NRC column two plant. We have the longest substantive cross cutting issues in human performance in the history of nuclear power in the United States. Forced the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to change their procedures. We've always had a plan. When are we actually going to do something to implement those plans? Um, what's that? Sorry. Um, there are two tiers of discipline at the plant. One for the individual worker, which is uh, disciplinary actions for termination, and then another for management, which is nothing. Uh, I observed a safety violation in uh, the only controlled area. I spoke to the people. They verbally stated they knew they were violating the procedures, a director and a manager. I wrote a notification. I filed an allegation. The, re the end result was they didn't do anything wrong. So. That ties into the safety conscious work environment because if my best truth, if John's best truth right here, it, it ends up in, in nothing happening, then why are people going to continue to raise concerns? Why, what, what motivation do I have to continue to raise a concern when my best truth is worth nothing? Um, there's no trust and no management uh, support and engagement. I saw that was one of your column one things. You have significant work in the area of trust and management support and engagement. There's also no trust in the employee concerns program. The end result is nothing happens, and everybody knows that. Um, the increase in allegations is only uh, proof positive that nobody trusts the corrective action process, nobody speaks to the supervisor, nobody speaks to the manager, and um, their, their last resort is to file an allegation. I met with Doug Bowder. I had a personal invitation to meet with him about a notification that I wrote concerning uh, the human performance program. Um, I felt, as, as part of that team, I felt that um, we couldn't achieve our goals with our current process. And this is a quote. Uh, Doug said, it took a lot of guts for you to say what you had to say. That's a good quote. But it's indicative that it took a lot of guts to tell the truth. Why do I have to have a lot of guts to tell the truth at San Onofre? It's because everybody's afraid to tell the truth. That's proof positive that it's a serious trust uh, issue at the plant. Um, where did the gentleman say that he got out last night at 7.30 and spoke with some workers? That's great. But the crux is, the, the critical point, the crucial point is the relationship between the supervisor and the worker, the manager, and the worker. And the problem that we have is the management at San Onofre does not see the value in a human heart. They don't see the value in the contributions of an individual worker. And that's why we don't have any trust, and that's why we are where we are today. Um, okay. Um, I make a commitment uh, as a licensed operator to protect uh, the health and safety of the public. But I'm telling you that if there's no trust in an organization, 
we cannot protect the health and safety of the public if people are afraid to raise safety concerns. That is a significant task that Joe has ahead of him, and uh, I wish you the best of luck, Joe, in your endeavors. Every time I come to one of these meetings, I get terrified uh, because of the, the, the people that are so brave and Rick and Peter, I guess the other guy's name was. You know, who has the, the nerve, the guts to come up in front of all of you and, and make a statement like that? It, it terrifies me as a member of the public that somebody has to be that brave because things are going so badly. We haven't seen any progress in four years. We're still not seeing any progress. And in fact, things are getting worse. And Joe, they brought you in because it looks to some people like you did a good job. They gave you awards from the NEI. But we have other records of South Texas Project, which doesn't show that it's been such a well-run plan. You've got leaks everywhere. It was shut down to go on for a long time. You were brought in because they were having problems. But they still have problems. And now there's lawsuits over the other two reactors. The 81,000 are probably not going to work anyway. Well, let's talk about those tsunamis. We used to have a, uh, 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 your, your guy, what, what do they call him, a public affairs guy. He told me that uh, the dry casks can survive 50 feet uh, uh, underwater. Within a few months of hearing that, we had a, a, the tsunami in, in um, Banda Aceh. The waves were on film of over 60 feet. Now, there's no question there can be waves much bigger than that because the underwater uh, Formation, rock formations here could, could slip and create a, 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 a tidal wave of hundreds of feet. And you, Joe, you said that you don't have a, a problem with the, the nuclear waste at South Texas Project because you can keep it all on site for as long as you want. Now, we had to listen to Ray Golden tell us for 10 years, 15 years, the Yucca Mountain is going to be the solution to the problem. The Yucca Mountain is not working. Uh, Obama's got a committee to try to come up with something else, but the committee to they came up with the mountain was told that they could think of anything better. They were allowed to come up with it. But they couldn't come up with anything better. Now, Joe, you don't have anything better because what you said was you were just going to keep it all on site. And they, you had 1,200 acres or 12,000 acres at, at uh, STB. You've got, what, about 450 here? I mean, this is no place to keep. I mean, look at where you've got the steam generator there. It's literally a stone's throw from the highway. Now, let's hope I don't have a stone on the way home when I drive by because it's that close. Well, who fears these things? Are you guys really trying to do a good job, or are you just trying to snow with nobody? Because we know the dry houses aren't safe. We know they're not safe from earthquakes. They're not safe from tsunamis. They're not safe from terrorists. I got a letter from the guy saying that they can survive a, a bunker buster bomb. That's not true. That's just not true. I don't need to get letters like that. Was it one of your employees that sent it, or some other nuclear power plant that didn't like something I wrote? I get tired of all these lies. And as for you, NRC, what are you guys still doing here? I mean, it's been years, and things are getting worse. Can't we get a new team? Someone that knows what they're doing? Or, or don't they exist at the NRC? I guess that's about it for me. I know most of you Thanks very much. Thank you. There's an event list at the uh, NRC website, and I'll close a link to that as well. In an industry where the health and the welfare of the population and the environment is at serious risk of illness and death, as well as the safety of its own workers, honesty, accuracy, accountability, and integrity should be top priorities. And I know that there are many honest, hardworking people that work at these plants. And from what the whistleblower is saying, they fear retaliation from the industry itself for speaking out about their legitimate concerns. Is this any way to run any kind of business with this, you know, corrupt, neglectful, and, and dishonest behavior, especially the nuke industry where one false move <clears throat> has the potential to kill millions of people and, and poison the area that we live in? Um, things to think about. Please comment below. Stay safe.